Hello, this is a setup tutorial for the Dynamic Health Bars asset. I have Unreal Engine 5 opened here and I have a fresh copy of the first person template project and I have uh, added the Dynamic Health Bars asset. So inside this folder there's a map with a bunch of different um, health bar setup to look differently. So if you want to look at the examples you can you can check it out in this folder. Um, but for this tutorial I want to show you how to add health bar to a to a fresh blueprint because that's probably how you're going to add it to your own project. So um, you should be able to follow, follow along and use this guide to add the health bars to your own actors. So what I'm going to do is um, create a new actor. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call this um, target actor and in the folder I'm going to create a new blueprint class actor bp underscore let's just call that target actor as well and then in the blueprint I'm going to add a static mesh component um, and let's call that sm target SM of course uh, means static mesh so if you go to here if we type in uh, shooting target there's a static mesh called SM underscore shooting target that comes with the with this package um, and it's just a shooting target from a shooting range so compile that let's just put that into the level straight away to see how that looks so it looks something like that it's got collision on it um, it's pretty basic, doesn't do anything else obviously at the moment. So the next thing we're going to do is to add the actual uh, health bar. So let's get rid of these, we don't need these. We do need begin play, we can leave that. So if we click add and uh, add widget, we're going to add a widget component. Um, we want this to be screen space and the widget class is floating health bar. So widget underscore floating health bar is the main widget which has all the functionality on it. So let's select that. Um, let's rename this actually um, widget component because that's probably more accurately what it is. And the next thing we want to do is we want to add a helper function to extract the actual widget from the widget component so we don't have to get it every single time. So let's make a new function and let's call this get health bar widget uh, make that pure so it's return only and in the outputs we want this to return the actual widget from the component widget floating health bar um, let's just call that health bar and to get that we want to drag in the widget component we want to get the user widget object which will return a generic version of whatever widget it is and then we need to cast that to the floating health bar. So this function essentially extracts the widget from the widget component. Uh, compile that, go back to the event graph. Now what we need to do is um, drag this helper function and call initialize and that sets up the widget to be used. Um, it's a massive function, there's a lot of uh, properties here but I felt like it was the best way to just expose everything at the start so you can choose your options. Um, once you call initialize you don't have to do any of this stuff again so this is a one-time thing. Um, I thought about doing it several ways, maybe doing it over several functions but I felt like this is probably just the easiest way so you can see all the options um, at once. So one thing that you will need is to add this actor as the parent when you initialize the widget. So in almost all cases you would want to add a reference to this. In this case uh, this this target range actor. Um, oh another thing we should probably do is if you look at the widget the component we want to move that up just over the head otherwise it's going to appear down here. So you compile that, um, it's been initialized. If we run the game now we should be able to see that widget and there it is. You can see that it's in screen space. Um, 
it's facing the camera, obviously. Doesn't do anything it do, doesn't do anything at the moment when you shoot the target. Obviously we haven't set any functionality to do that yet, so let's do that next. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to detect hit in a really simple way. So for my static mesh, I'm just going to call I'm just going to add a um, a callback for when it gets hit. So anytime this gets hit, because it's got collision on it of course, it's going to uh, call this function. Um, and in our case it's going to call this function when the bullet hits the hits the target uh, the target range actor. So the first thing we want to do, let's let's destroy the bullet. So if we run this it should now destroy the bullet. Oh did I yeah yeah okay there you go. So bullet gets destroyed and then um, let's get the health bar widget using our helper function that we created and let's subtract 15 to the main bar. Now there's options for additional bars. I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial. I'll do that in the next one. For now we're just concerned with the main bar and let's subtract this by 15. Okay. Uh, 15 from what? So if you look at the initialize function there's a max value here and that's the essentially that that's how much um, that, that's the value of the health bar when you when you when you initialize it. You can obviously set that to whatever value you, you want. By default, it's 100, um, and then I'll set it to subtract 15 when when this target gets hit. So it should subtract it by 15. There you go. Uh, when it reaches zero, there's no additional logic to handle what happens. Uh, in your case, you probably want to destroy the actor, um, play a particle effect, play a sound, whatever it is. So what we're going to do, just to demonstrate a few more functions of the of the health bar, is what we're going to do is that if we detect that it's uh, the health is zero or less, and we can do that by get current value. And again, you can choose the value of additional bars, but for now we're just going to use the main bar. Um, so if that's less than or equal to zero, we're going to just reset it to 100. Just, uh, I just want to show you a few more functions, okay? So if it's less than or equal to zero, we want to set um, set value set value again of the main bar to 100. So what it's going to do is that every time it gets shot, we destroy the bullet, we subtract 15, we check whether the value after that subtraction is less or equal to zero. If it's true, then we reset the value to 100. So I've shown uh, three functions, subtract function, get the current value function, and set the value function, right? So there's three functions that I'm, that, that I'm showing here. So when it reaches zero, it should just reset to 100. There you go. Now again, obviously in your own game, you probably want to um, destroy the actor, play effect, whatever it is, when you've detected it's less than zero. So if you drag out from the health bar um, and you go to the call function, you can see all the functions that this health bar has. So you can set the max value, you can reset the max value. So maybe um, at the start, you set it to 100, but maybe partway through the game, enemies level up, you can reset the value to something else, right? Maybe it starts at 100, maybe the, the enemy can level up and you can set the max value to 200. Um, you can, this plays an animation on the health bar when um, when the parent actor dies, so you can get it to sort of fade out nicely. Uh, you can, um, you can add value, you can add status effects, which I'm going to go over in the uh, options tutorial, but I won't do it here. So these are all the, uh, the functions that you can call. Um, so I guess <clears throat> I'm not going to go over too many of these. I just want to show a couple of things that you can do just really quickly. So we can obviously change the name. So let's just say you're fighting against an orc archer or something like that. Um, you can optionally show the percentage health left on the right side um, and you can set how many segments so maybe this health bar has like four chunks so 
if you just set those three settings you can see that um, okay let's also change the color um, maybe it's kind of like purplish so then you have a health bar that's a different color you have four chunks you have you've, we've changed the name and you can optionally show the percentage remaining on the right and those are just and those are just some of the options there's a whole bunch of things that you can set you can change um, you can add optional bars like I mentioned you can set this up for multiplayer so you can make it so that uh, each team sees the bar as a different color but excuse me uh, again like I said I'll show that in the next video there's one more thing that I do want to show and that is uh, this can be included uh, tick box now by default it's set to false because it, it will run quicker if, if you don't need it to uh, be included by objects so if I run this at the moment and I uh, and I hide behind like a crate you can see that you can still see the health bar now for certain types of games maybe like top-down games action RPGs and things like that you probably don't really need to hide the health bar but obviously for uh, first-person shooters third-person shooters and things like that you probably will want to so I'm going to show you how to uh, set that up now one thing that I think it's a quirk specifically of this map um, first person shooter template map is that this map currently is set up to use a world partition mini map but in the world settings um, the world partition is set to not enable streaming now I believe that that should be ticked to true otherwise weird things happen so weird things do happen with the the, the health bar asset but it's not unique to my asset. I've tested just some simple blueprints and they do weird things if this option isn't set if you're using World Partition Minimap. Now, for regular levels, obviously it doesn't have this setting, so it's it's perfectly fine. But if you're doing really large maps and you want to use this world this new world partition minimap system of UE5, um, you do want to enable this, which I, I kind of believe that you always do anyway. So I think that might be an oversight of the of the of the default level for the first person template project. Um, if not, please let me know. But, but but that's what I think. So that needs to be set to true. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, if you go back to the actor, um, we want to set that to to true, obviously. And then we need to add a new component to support this occlusion. So if we go to add and we type in child actor. Um, so it needs to be a child actor let's just call that occlusion volume and then in the child actor settings the child actor class needs to be uh, FHB underscore occlusion volume and then in the settings you can change the scale and the offset of this box so essentially if we go to viewport you can see the box this box essentially um, is checked by the health bar to see whether it's on screen if it is then the health bar is visible if not the health bar will be uh, will be invisible so this box really needs to encompass your your actor so in this case obviously you can see that it's it's way too small it's way too short so what we're going to do is in the properties and it's important that you use the properties here not these properties over here we're going to scale the box in the Z direction by 2 um, and we're going to set the offset to 100 and you can see now it pretty much perfectly encapsulates the uh, the target range mesh so if we compile that and go back to the map and play it the health bar now should be included there you go so if that actor is occluded, or rather that box we've set up is occluded, then the health bar is going to be occluded as well. Now remember there is a cost to using it, so if you don't need them to be occluded, depending on what type you're gaming, um, please leave that option off, otherwise uh, this is how you set that up. Now that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, like I said, there's a whole bunch of settings that you can change to customize the look of your health bars but I'm going to go over that in the next video um, but what I've gone through in, in this video should be enough to <clears throat> let you set up health bars in your own project I'm going to leave a link below for the next videos for customization options but otherwise thanks for watching